Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we're going to look at Ty Booker's The Day of the Storm. I'm with you on 676, 677. The text itself is on 682. Um, hey, just to remind a couple of things. Um, remember, we are comparing imagery using this chart that's on 676. So as we go through this text, which is really a reflective essay that uh, Ty Booker will write. Uh, read with me on 677. Booker resides in Louisiana. Booker's piece, The Day of the Storm, was written in an English course when she was asked to reflect on Hurricane Katrina. She says, quote, I wrote from my heart a very true account of what life was like during and after these powerful storms, end quote. Let's turn now to 682. And our challenge here is to bring together the uh, the last uh, text that we were that we worked with just before um, that's the that's the hope text of David Hilburn and now some more information about Hurricane Katrina the day of the storm I'd like you to think about as you read this text I'd like you to think about the ways in which the, you have a a description of a terrible experience and think about the last time you had a really bad experience in your life and the ways in which this description is an attempt to try to capture something which can we say this out loud you can't really describe the devastation of something like Hurricane Katrina all right let's go ahead and go to it now just follow along the day of the storm the day of the storm by Ty Booker Southeastern Louisiana University freshman I don't watch much TV so to hear a hurricane was heading for Louisiana was a scare Earlier in the week, I was talking to my sister and she had informed me a storm was brewing in the Gulf. I paid little to no attention because every storm since Andrew in 98 was supposedly due to hit Louisiana directly and didn't. As a matter of fact, Andrew is the only big storm I can remember. Vivid images come to mind, pine trees emitting their signature smells from the freshly cracked wood lie in the street like barricades. For about a week, my family survived on Cheerios and Spam. It was all we had. Since then, a hurricane only meant a day or two off from school and Louisiana dodging the bullet one more time. Friday, August 26, my cousin and I drove to New Orleans to pick up another relative. We took for granted the scenery and simple pleasures of the city. We never realized what lay ahead. I have always been a hard-headed person. So this particular weekend, I decided to stay on campus. My cousin traveled back to Baton Rouge alone to go to work while I stayed in Hammond, ignorant of the events ahead. On Saturday, the calls flooded my cell phone. Everyone called to tell me about Katrina. I finally, after 20 phone calls, decided to turn on the TV. There she was, coming straight for New Orleans. I was only a city or two away. Every channel and every news bulletin carried the same yet simple message, get out while you can. As I watched her turn like a propeller, it all became grim reality. We were going to be hit and hit hard. I had nowhere to go. Here I was on the fourth floor of Livingston Hall in my room with a category five hurricane headed for a city only 52 miles away. I knew I needed to stock up on food if I was going to be here to endure the storm. Cayman's was closed, and the lion's den wasn't an option. The only thing I had was my SLU ID, so I decided to make a vending machine run. After three trips to the electric snack havens, I figured that I had enough. The last time I walked across the barren, deserted parking lot, a man in army fatigues caught my eye. Curiosity took over, and I went to inquire as to why he was on campus. He proceeded to explain that the Kinesiology and Health Studies building was being used as shelter for ill people. As he continued to ramble on, my thoughts began to come into focus. This was serious. I pretended to listen, but only a few words stuck out in my mind. Dorms closed, university center, shelter. I thanked him, walked away, and those words formed themselves into two-ton bricks, each falling upon me like rain. Each one came faster than the one before. I realized he had just told me we had to evacuate the dorms and take shelter in the university center. I panicked, packed up my belongings as if it were checkout time, 
and waited for the all call. At about 5.15 p.m., the clouds couldn't take the pressure as they succumbed to the rain, surrendering themselves peacefully without a fight. The wind picked up, and here I was running to the university center on North Campus with the few belongings that I could grab. The wind began to howl like a werewolf in the night. This was the one. Katrina was here, and she was as strong as two oxen. I made it into the university center, soaked but safe. I looked around, found a spot, and made myself at home. I drifted off into a deep sleep, the last peaceful night of rest I would get for a while. When I did awake, I heard the university president, Randy Moffat, on the loudspeaker telling us that Katrina was in fact here and she was marking her territory all around us as he spoke. 684. He told us we were in the worst two or three hours of the storm and we had no water or lights until the generators could be powered up. I went to the window, looking out on University Avenue and surveyed old oak trees thrown around as if they were small branches. As I took all this in, I couldn't help but think, this isn't the worst. This is only the beginning. When we were let out of the University Center on Tuesday, August 30th, the water was on, but cold, and there was still no electricity. I came back to a dank, dark dorm room, but I was thankful to have survived and to have a place to call home to come to. Later in the day, my cousin came back to pick me up. I was relieved and cried tears of joy. I was grateful to be back in Baton Rouge with my family and out of harm's way. However, once I arrived, I realized the devastation Katrina's wrath caused along the Gulf Coast. When I turned on the TV, I thought it was something unreal. I couldn't even have imagined what I saw. Houses submerged to their roof, a whole city flooded. It was then that I thanked the heavens above, allowing me to be fortunate. And it was then that I vowed never to take life's simple gifts for granted. All right, let's turn now to this text, and let's first of all make sure that we have it in our notes. This is what we call a little reflective essay, and all it really does is just kind of tells us about an experience that Ty Booker had that, um, that was quite remarkable, right, in terms of, of what had to happen, right? Now, the, the challenge um, is that Ty Booker um, is, like many people, unable to accept the possibility because they've heard so many times, terrible storm coming, terrible storm coming, terrible storm coming. She can't take it that seriously. And so notice in this piece, it goes from kind of like, yeah, 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 a storm is coming to, ho, oh, no way, a storm is actually here. And that then leads to kind of freak out mode, right? And then you start to kind of go, oh, no way, no way. Then, of course, at the very end of the passage, you kind of have survived and you go, man, I'm really, I'm really thankful that I got through this terrible experience, right? Let's go ahead and just play now with some of the images that come to mind. Notice on 682, she even says that, the images that come to mind. Um, she says it, we took for granted the scenery and simple pleasures of the city, right? Um, the similes uh, on page 683, for example, as I watched her turn the Cortina um, uh, hurricane, I, as I watched her turn like a propeller, of course, if you ever watched right um, uh, um, those uh, things on TV and the weather patterns and all of that, right? So then all of a sudden it hits her. This was serious. She says, I panicked. I was running. She said the wind was howling like a werewolf. Notice she made herself at home in her new, in her new place at the university center, and she's able to sleep. Um, when she gets up, though, what is it that she sees? Now, this is going to take us back to the text Hope, right? The old oak trees, I'm on page 684, thrown around us as if they were small branches, right? And she says, I took all this in and, and couldn't help but think, this isn't the worst. This is only the beginning. At the very end, of course, a whole city flooded, the devastation. She said, I vowed never to take life's simple gifts for granted. Write it down. This is an example of where your thesis is actually the last line of the piece. What is the point here at 2A? Never take for granted the most important simple things in your life because devastation can prove to you how fragile those simple things are.
food, water, a home, friends, all of that kind of thing. Obviously a to be. You have some powerful symbols here. Notice the interesting way this little piece is constructed. First this happened, then this happened, then this happened, right? It just kind of describes the events with that final line that says, this is what I learned. Now, at some point, you're going to have to write a reflective essay. And a reflective essay does two things, so write this down in 2B. One, it describes an event from your past that's significant. Two, it tells us why that event is important in your life. Notice the last line. I learned to not, to not take the, the life simple um, gifts for granted, right? In other words, I learned to appreciate things more, all right? At 3A, Let's ask now how this text relates to the text of hope. So jot, down, jot that one down. Obviously, they both treat about the terrible uh, tragedy of Katrina, of Katrina. Obviously, they talk about trying to see something good out of something bad, right? What is for you a text that helps you to, to kind of remember that? What is a text for you that helps you to remember, don't take life's simple pleasures for granted? It's the little things in life that matter. You'll remember that we started our freshman year by talking with that little poem, My Heart Leaps Up When I Behold a Rainbow in the Sky. Learn from a child that some of the most beautiful things in life are some things as silly as rainbows. In other words, words were says, right? Finally, in 3B, what is for you an event in your life that taught you don't take life's simple gifts for granted? For example, if I were to ask you, I need you to write a reflective essay where you write about one time in your life where you learned something and that something was, life is really important and precious, don't take it for granted. Jot down really quickly, what would that event be for you? Because you're gonna come back to it maybe here in a bit. Well, there you go, an introduction to the um, Katrina experience. And you can obviously Google more, I hope that you do, to learn more about that tragedy and the amazing work after the fact too. Thank you.